Sunbelt expectations versus reality. It's the Georgia Southern Eagles on Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Sunbelt is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Okay, uh, on this show, we'll do the expectations and uh, reality for Georgia Southern. We'll also have a, a short chit chat with a former Raging Cajun safety going into his second year with the Washington Commander, uh, Commanders, Percy Butler. Uh, all right, so let's do Georgia Southern. Six and seven last year because they lose a bowl game uh, and had an up and down year, right? I mean, that was as roller coaster ride uh, as it gets with a win against Nebraska. Uh, they're blowing ball games against South Alabama and getting hammered by the Cajuns and then have a crazy overtime victory against a rival App State. Kyle Van Treese was everything as advertised, uh, wins the Nebraska ball game with a QB draw. And again, if you're looking at that play, uh, because there's nobody in the middle, uh, Kyle Van Treese was able to say, there's nobody in the middle. We're going to go straight up the middle and gets the winning score. Uh, but at the same time, just way too many interceptions uh, for Clay Helton and his Georgia Southern Eagles. Uh, we did have Phil Steele on, right? Phil Steele on, and he, he's amazed at how quickly that Clay Helton was able to go from option football to a passing attack. Uh, and it'd be really interesting, like South Alabama, if you had Kyle Van Treese back for a second season. If you had Kyle Van Treese back for a second season, you'd, you may be picked a little bit higher than they were and uh, maybe could do some damage in the East. At least that's the expectations. We'll talk about the reality here in a second. You do get Davis Brin from uh, Tulsa, and they have some interesting uh, statistics from last year because the quarterbacks were pretty good. Davis Brin, uh, let's see here, 60% completion percentage. He had 17 touchdowns and eight interceptions. Not, all right. You need to be a little bit better these days than two to one, and that's a little bit better than two to one. He averaged 237 yards a game. Braylon Braxton, he also had a good rating. His completion percentage was about the same. He threw for 10 touchdowns and two interceptions. So in that Tulsa offense, they were very good. Ken Davis, Brent, and I think he does have a couple of years of uh, eligibility left. If he can be that guy, Throw it down the field and because, again, Van Treese had fantastic statistics except the interceptions. That was the problem uh, with Kyle Van Treese, his kind of decision-making, right? 27 touchdowns is outstanding. You know, I'm presuming a Georgia Southern record, 4,253 yards. I think Georgia Southern could go three years, uh, maybe even more without that kind of uh, passing pr uh, production. Uh, and he threw it 60%. He threw it over 60%, uh, threw it over 600 times, 604 attempts, uh, completing 371. But those 16 interceptions is really what killed uh, Kyle Van Treese and uh, Georgia Southern. So if Davis Brin can step up into that kind of mold, go get those 27 touchdowns, and 600 attempts is a lot. So interceptions are going to come, whether it's decision-making, you know, tipped at the line or off a of wide receiver's hands. It's tough not to throw a lot of interceptions with those kind of uh, attempts in college football. Uh, but he can get it to 10. If you can go 30 and 10, I would take in what Clay Helton wants to do, I'd go three to one. If you can get 30 touchdowns and 10 interceptions, that's not bad. Because, I mean, if you go, I mean, what do we want to see? Patrick Mahomes for, I mean, let's just try that. I know that's like the best quarterback in the NFL, but let's see what his stats are. All right, and not even the interception portion of the show, just how many attempts that he had. Because uh, it just seems like a lot. 604 attempts. Let's see. That seems like a lot. Let's see here. Stats. Uh, 
Oh, well, he had 648 attempts, but that's in 17 ball games. <laughs> you know, you know, Kyle Van Trees played in 13 ball games, so still like a lot, uh, as it turns out. So the they got to cut down on interceptions. All right, that would be uh, the key thing, and the expectations right now for Georgia Southern are fifth, right? You in the East, you have it is what JMU app. Coastal, Marshall's picked fourth, then Georgia Southern, then Georgia State, and then ODU. So there's not, in reality, a whole lot of expectations for Georgia Southern to compete in the East, but they can. They absolutely can. It's It'll be real important. We'll go over the schedule here. Uh, it is important for them to get off to a good start because... The schedule is front-loaded, not necessarily easier, but home games. And on the back end, it is much more difficult just because you're traveling on uh, the road. So maybe this is one of those teams that can go under the radar a little bit because there are not expectations. there. Georgia Southern will not be the hunted team. They won't be Marshall. They won't be JMU. They won't be Coastal. They won't be South. They won't be Troy. They probably won't even be the Cajuns. They're going to be the hunter. They're going to go after these teams. And if you get these guys that have been in there for a couple of, you know, been in there for a year and now two years, maybe they can help Davis Brin along to make those good decisions, take what the uh, defense gives you. And if it doesn't, and we saw this on Saturday, some poor decisions by backup quarterbacks, uh, they end up in interceptions and can totally change the football game. Field goals and punts are better than turnovers. And so that's where Georgia Southern is. I think maybe they're a little bit under the radar, which is a little bit interesting. But again, you're turning over quarterbacking wise. But now Clay Helton is into year two. So all the guys returning can help out. uh, Can help out Davis Brin. And specifically, we're looking at Caleb Hood. Caleb Hood set a record, what, 87 receptions? Again, you could play for Georgia Southern southern for a decade uh you know four or five years ago and <laughs> not you know not accumulate 87 receptions he was second team all sunbelt let's see if he takes that to the next level all right he's going to have more confidence in what he's doing in the offense and can davis Brin uh, get him the ball you'd like to see from a georgia southern point of view uh obviously he's moving the ball um you know he's moving the ball down the field getting first downs 87 catches he like more than three touchdowns all right he should be closer to the double digits and touchdowns for georgia southern maybe the defenses are you know shading towards him closer to the end zone but you really are looking for him uh he's making a lot of catches and not necessarily having averaging a lot of yards right 10 yards a care 10 yards a reception you know usually the deeper guys are doing you know 15 to 18 but you'd like to see him get into the end zone a little bit more and i think that's what's going to happen uh, this year. All right, let's take a timeout. When we come back, we'll go over that schedule that has Georgia Southern. Really important to get off to a good start. Don't forget, we'll have former Raging Cajun Percy Butler at the end of uh, the show. Now time for your game changer of the week. Brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Much like Carter Bradley from South Alabama, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste Good. Carter Bradley in South Alabama absolutely have an opportunity this weekend in New Orleans to take down the Tulane Green Wave, and they can, and he and they can change the game for South Alabama throughout the season. It is Carter Bradley, your athletic brewing company game a changer. Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good, full flavor and well-crafted, just like full strength beer. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use Locked On to get 15% off your first online order. That's code Locked On at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions, and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all time. All right, Dave Schultz, Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. 
Uh, let's go over that Georgia Southern schedule because I think it's it's an opportunity to get off to a very good start uh, overall and in the Sun Belt. I think that is important for uh, the Georgia Southern Eagles. They play the Citadel at home and then UAB at home. All right, then they're at Wisconsin. We're not going to talk about that too much. But you get your first two ball games at home. You got to take care of FCF, the Citadel. All right. Uh, and then you get Trent Dilfer, Trent Dilfer and UAB. Uh, the Cajuns will be paying attention to that game, actually, as they are playing a they're playing ODU on and week number two in an early conference matchup. But they'll have their eye on that ball game uh, because they will play UAB the next week. Uh, and so you get Citadel and UAB at home. Take care of those. That's two and zero. We'll say Wisconsin is a loss, but then you get Ball State, and Ball State's one of those schools. That, you know, can be, you know, are they good? You know, let's see what they were last year. Let's see what Ball State finished last year. See if we get that a little bit quickly. Because, yeah, they were five and seven overall last year. Three and five in, in, in their conference. Let's see the season before. Because they can be, yeah, six and seven. So that's got to be a win. So Georgia Southern can start out. Three and one, all right? And this is where it's important to get it done in conference. You got Coastal coming in. You're going at James Madison. You got ULM and Georgia State at home. There's no reason. Can you go three and one in that time? All of a sudden, you're like six and two. We'll say the game at James Madison is lost. Although, did they beat them last year? Was that... uh... Well, we got to check that out. So you got to you got to win those three games at home. And if you lose to JMU, that is, you know, JMU is going to expect to win that in Harrisonburg. All right. Because after those four ball games, and you're going to take on Georgia State. Georgia State thinks that's a um, the, the rivalry. Georgia Southern's rival is App. All right. So then you're on the road at Texas State. Could be a win. Marshall's going to be tough. You're at home versus Old Dominion, and then you're at App State. So three of the first four Sun Belt games are at home. Got to go three and one. Can you knock off Texas State on the road? That's four and one. Marshall's going to be tough. That's four and two. Take down Old Dominion. That's five and two. And we'll see what happens at App State. All right. App State is expected to announce their quarterback today. So we'll find out who their starting quarterback is. Uh, today if it uh, you know maybe you're watching this later in the night so it's already been announced but we're expecting that announcement on monday uh do not know if we have a a quarterback yet for jmu uh all right so important i mean they actually absolutely have an opportunity to compete maybe do you knock you got to knock off coastal at home that sends a message right away do you go on the road and beat james madison texas state is a very winnable ball game again at marshall is going to be tough and with the rivalry, you have no idea. They, again, there's no expectations for Georgia Southern this year. There's none. They were picked fifth by the coaches. No expectations. The reality is they have a shot. Usually we're talking about the reality is negative. Here, it's positive. They, they absolutely have a shot. Getting off to a good start. Uh, maybe three and one to begin the season. Again, any, ro- any road win in college football is a good one. So going to beat Ball State in Muncie is not a for sure thing, but certainly a winnable ball game, right? That's not at Wisconsin. It's at Ball State. So you start out three and one. You could start out. You could easily start out six and two. And you're three and one in the conference. They absolutely have it. All right. The what I what they need to do and what happened last year, and this was this always happened a lot with less miles at LSU. They would lose the Alabama game and they would be so down, they'd lose the next week's game. Ed Orgeron turned that around. For everything that Ed Orgeron did or did not do, they didn't lose the same game twice. And we've been talking about this for a little bit with Georgia Southern. They lost the same game twice last year. They let the South Alabama game get away from them and that put them on a little bit of a skid, a three-game skid, in fact. They lose to South Alabama, what was it, 31 to 10 in the fourth quarter? Let's see here. 
Uh, it was 31 17. Well, actually, it was 31. It was 31 17 in the third quarter. Uh, South made it 31 24. And, you know, Ladanian Webb just, you know, kept on running, kept on running, kept on running. But it was a 21 to 7 ball game and a 31 to 17 ball game. And Georgia Southern let that one get away. It was actually, you know, if you look at it from a 21 to 7 game, South Alabama outscored them 31 to 10 from that moment in time. South Alabama was dealing with the flu. Carter Bradley threw a pick six on the first play, and immediately South Alabama was behind. They turned it around with a fake punt, and Georgia Southern didn't recover in that ballgame. The problem is they ended up going on a short week to the Cajuns and never were in that ballgame. Got blown out up 36-17. That led to the Marshall game at home, losing 23-10. to They didn't lose the same game twice. They lost the same game three times. Or same game, yeah. They they lost South Alabama, and due to that loss, they lost to Louisiana, and they lost to Marshall. Can't do that. If you lose a ball game, put it behind you, do the 24-hour rule, right? Either, you know, mope for 24 hours or bask in the glow for 24 hours, but you got to move on. And so that would be the one thing that I would say, you know, if you, if you do lose a close ball game to Coastal, don't take that to JMU. If you lose a, a close ball game to JMU, don't lose the next ball game to ULF. And if they can avoid losing streaks, they got a good shot. I mean, are they going to have a losing streak like Texas State and would it be Texas State and Marshall? All right, those are tough. But boy, if you can beat Texas State, then all of a sudden maybe you've won three in a row. You get a little momentum going into Huntington. And so I think it's interesting because a lot of these things, I have expectation, high expectations for South Alabama, with the Cajuns, and then you bring in reality, and reality is South has their four toughest games on the road, whether I like that or not. But for Georgia Southern, they have two home games to begin with, both winnable. They're playing Wisconsin. That's a payday. That's fine. I mean, they did beat Nebraska, but Wisconsin's not Nebraska. Beat Ball State, you started out 3-1. Three, three of the first four uh, Sun Belt games are at home. Most definitely winnable. And then... Uh, you got tough stuff three of the last four on the road, including App State. So, I mean, they have, well, they will have a shot. I think they will have a shot at contending in the East. Uh, if Davis Brin can take his game to the next level, cut down on the interceptions that Kyle Van Trees did, maybe cut down on his own interceptions a little bit. He was just over two to one. We kind of need like three to one these days, especially in a 12 game schedule. If you can get, I mean, even less than that would be great, right? 30 to 10. That's even a lot because 10 is going to have, that's almost one per ball game. That may be a little bit too much. You can't have turnovers these days in college football. All right. So those are my, my expectations are there aren't a lot for Georgia Southern, but I think they're a little bit under the radar. The reality is they have a shot at, uh, at sneaking up on people, I guess, if, if that's what you want to say and, uh, and doing some damage in the Sun Belt East. Let's see if they take advantage of the schedule that they've been given. All right, let's take one more time out. When we come back, we will have Percy Butler on, a former Raging Cajun safety. Now, uh, his in his second season with the Washington Commanders, he is there with former teammates Andre Jones Jr. and uh, Farad Gardner. We'll do that next on Locked on a Sun Belt, your team every day. But let's talk about game time. Buying tickets to your favorite sporting events shouldn't be stressful or whatever event they may be. Game time is fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you have. What are some things about the Game Time app experience? They have flash deals and last-minute tickets. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Uh, they give you the images of the seating view and the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and even job loss protection. Game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. 
Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, before we wrap up, uh, Locked On Sun Belt, your team every day with Percy Butler from the Raging Cajuns. We're at five hundred and seventy subscribers on the YouTube channel. All right, we have a week to get to 600 that is easily doable and as far as i'm concerned i'm counting when kickoff and now kickoff's been pushed back so we actually have an extra hour 7 30 p.m central time so again that's not very much uh it slowed down a little bit over the last couple of days but you know every little bit counts and so we're looking for 600 subscribers thank you so much to everybody who has done that so far Please tell your friends and family. It is a big help as the channel continues to grow and we get to talk all things a Sun Belt. I mean, we got Coastal Carolina at UCLA. You got, uh, I mean, Arkansas State's play and like Baylor. I mean, you got all kinds of things going on here in the Sun Belt. And we're looking forward to talking about all of those stuff as, uh, as week one gets underway. And the Sun Belt has a full slate of action. All right. So please subscribe on YouTube. We're almost there. We're going to get to 600 really close to that day on uh, September 2nd uh, by the time South Alabama, or I'm sorry, by the time the Cajuns uh, kick off. Uh, so really appreciate it. Also, it's a big help with those downloads. The audio downloads are going like gangbusters. The numbers have more than doubled this month. Uh, you can find them at Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Those are the two most popular. We did have somebody put in a review, so that's appreciative. It was a good review. We mostly got five stars. That's a big help. So if you're on Apple Podcasts, please rate and review uh, as well. All right, let's wrap things up. Locked on Sun about your team every day. Had a rather quick conversation with former Raging Cajuns, now Washington Commander Safety, Percy Butler. Dave Schultz, Lyndon Burton, back on Sports Chat, 103.3 The GOAT. We're continuing our conversation with the former Raging Cajuns in Washington Commanders camp. This gentleman, actually a member of the Washington Commanders team, fourth round pick in 22. He is former Raging Cajuns safety, Percy Butler. Percy, Dave Schultz, thanks for hopping on. How you been? I've been good. Thanks for having me today, man. How is the, uh, how's the camp going? Oh, camp going great. Uh, I think we actually just finished camp like two days ago. So mm. we're getting into that season mode, but camp was great. Loved everything so about it. So what would be the difference between camp mode and season mode? That would seem less practice, maybe more meetings. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's let's um work on the body, you know, less like physical labor, but it's a lot of mental labor, you know. Sure, sure. All right. So what was it like being drafted in the fourth round, uh, and then making the team last year with the Commanders? Uh, so last year it was a great learning experience, but it if it, it it was great, you know, just to be around the group of guys that I came in with, you know, and to get drafted, you know, not, not a lot of people get drafted, you know? So it was amazing. Amazing experience. What's been the, uh, what was the biggest difference between college and pro ball? Uh, I'm a, the biggest difference for me, uh, definitely the speed of the game. And I'm going to say like, uh, you know, like in college, they have, you know, I ain't going to say a bad player, but, Everybody in the pro level is able to make like that spectacular play. You know what I'm saying? So you always got to be on your P's and Q's and you got to be definitely like it, it's so tech technical. Yeah. The game is more technical. Like you got to be more technique sound, you know? Yeah. Because in the, in college, you know, you might be lucky to have one lockdown corner, right? You might have one, NFL receiver and so if those two guys are going at it everybody else can take care of everybody else so yes I do know what uh you're talking about we're talking with Percy Butler former raging Cajun in his second year with the commanders what was it like uh what a, like after the first game we had a bunch of raging Cajun highlights uh all in one game you had an interception uh Braylon Trahan had an interception I mean he's 30 right didn't he start playing in like 2009 <laughs> I saw him play in high school and I've been gone for four years uh uh Johnson had a touchdown um uh uh Eric Guerrero had a tackle right it made an open field tackle the little guy from Mobile uh you guys balled out uh what's it like when 
you know, you're, I mean, you're thrilled with your interception, but everybody else had, uh, had a big day. It was like, raging Cajun, raging Cajun, raging Cajun. Oh, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's great to see that because, you know, like we had the, with that team right there, that a lot of those, a lot of those guys that you just named was on the, the team with the most wins in raging Cajun, Cajun history. So, you know, it was like, it had me hyped up when I got on Twitter and I seen all my guys balling out, especially BT, you know, because BT taught me a lot coming in because I came in after BT was in college. And just to see him, because he he always been a ball hawk, so just to see him do that in the first preseason game, I was hyped up for my guy for sure. Well, everybody's come in after BT was in college. He was there forever. <laughs> <laughs> He's Percy Butler with the well, – I got a big smile. You know, we're doing this on video, but on radio, I got a big smile because Percy knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, he's Percy Butler like with, the, <laughs> with the Washington Commanders. Uh, so not only were, were Cajuns balling out, you know, across uh, training camp, you have, you know, two former teammates uh, with you. You got Farrar Gardner, an undrafted free agent, and Andre Jones Jr., uh, defensive end. Uh, what's it like having a couple of guys in camp that you went to school with? Uh, it's great, you know, just to see those guys, you know, getting better day in and day out, and just to see them, you know, like elevating and being able to play at a high level just to know like we had that many NFL guys on a group of five team all in Lafayette, Louisiana, small town, you know what I'm saying? And for us to do that in college and to come and we coming into the NFL and still doing the same thing, like it just feel great. Uh, we're talking with Percy Butler on 1033 The Goat and Locked On Sunbelt. All right, so how long did it take before your head stopped spinning last year and now you have all that experience how different is camp this year compared to last uh so i say i got I, I ain't gonna say i got everything but i got it like the a lot of the stuff like stuff started slowing down for me around like week eight of the mm. season yeah and then i started getting like um some playing time on like third and long they it my coach made a package for me last year with third and long so that's when i started playing and then, like, for uh, this training camp, like, everything slowed down, like, all the way. Like, you know, like, it felt like – I'll say it felt like I was in the Raging Cajun defense again, you know, being able well, to make plays and just to see the soon before the offense called Hut, I can notice, like, who going to motion and all that, you know what I mean? And so what's it like with uh, – you, you got Gardner there and then – but you also have Jeremy Reeves. He's, he's a non-drafted free agent from a, a Sunbelt team as well. He made the Pro Bowl last year. So how, how has he been a help? Uh, Reeves, like he – Reeves is very smart. And he's been – he was on the special team unit with me. So he always, like, gave me tips and details. And we always had – you know, he went to South. So we beat South right. every year. We beat South every year. I was at – um. UL, so I always give him that, and he always said, "Yeah, you look out with that south." So we we have our little solving the fun bill jokes, you know. Care, careful, they're going to be good this year. <laughs> you, <laughs> you may want to might want may, may dial that down for this season only. He's good. <laughs> He's Percy Butler uh, from the Washington Commanders, former Raging Cajuns. Thanks so much for hopping on 103.3 The Goat Sports Shed and Lockdown Sunbelt. Best of luck this season. Thank you. Thank you for having me.